welcome to the 2023 International Documentary Film Festival in Munich. And welcome to the Q&A with the editors um, of the film Monaligned, scenes from the Ladewood Bridge Reels. I've got the name wrong, sorry. <laughs> Labudovic Reels, right? And um, with us are the um, editors in Paris, um, sitting there, and um, our uh, jury uh, of the Doc Edit Award here in the audience, and we'll tell you in a minute who's this, and um, around 50 to 60 people sitting in the audience, and you might not see them, but therefore I tell you. So, um, it has been true for a long time that um, uh, the finished film was met, made at the editing table, and to highlight the importance of the montage in the documentary film, a prize on editing is awarded. Now, for the third year, third year in a row, it's the Doc Edit Award presented by Adobe. And there are three films nominated, which is Dem and Minerals, Hashtag Race Girls, and also this film, Non-Aligned. With us today is a wonderful jury, jury of the Doc Edit Award, and uh, this is uh, Sven Kulik, um, born in Magdeburg, now based in Berlin, and he started in German television as assistant editor, studied film and editing at uh, the Ludwigsburg Film Academy, and worked since 2008 as freelance editor, won several prizes for his long-form documentaries. Welcome, Sven. This is Sven. And then there's Peter Koenig. Um, he worked in mainly for TV and um, also uh, cinema since 2003 and was head of post-production and several post-production houses for more than 14 years. Welcome, Peter. And there's Barbara, Barbara Tunjessen and she is Berlin-based and a highly decorated fiction and documentary film editor um, she edited for more than 20 years and is a member of the German as well as uh, the European Film Academy. Welcome, Paura. So now let me introduce to you the director Mila Toreljic and also uh, editor of this film very briefly. She was born in Belgrade, then Yugoslavia, now Serbia and her film Cinema Comunisto and the other side of Earth thing orbit around this collapse and disappearing of the former Yugoslavia. And uh, the film non-aligns scenes from the Labudovic reels, which we just saw, um, and Cine Guerillas scenes from the Labudovic reels are a documentary diptych, and we probably talk about this later. She won several prizes, and the list is so long that I won't name them, but um, she's also highly decorated. There are not so many films in her filmography, but uh, the list of prizes is endless. With, with us also is uh, Sylvie Gadmer, editor for fiction and non-fiction films, and uh, a second time co-editor, co-editor co since other projects in uh, 2017. I've heard just from um, a moment ago, and um, she was an editor, she's edit editor for more than 30 years now. Uh, her latest, her first films goes back to 1993, uh, I saw in your filmography. And she often chooses to alternate between working in fiction and a documentary in the belief that this switching between forms uh, creatively informs her work. Welcome Sylvie, welcome Mila. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, non-aligned being uh, um, is the second part of a documentary diptych. So, so what is a documentary diptych? Uh, is it a documentary theory? No, no. Um, first of all, thank you and good evening to everyone. It's. Uh, it's a film that started as one film and became two films, basically. Um, but it's, uh, 
as maybe we'll discuss, as we were making uh, this film, at one point we realized that the diversity of the material and what we were trying to do to it was really pointing in two different directions, two complementary but different directions. And we ended up in the end separating the material into two films um, that are stylistically very, very different. One is, as you saw, more of an essay film. The other one is a kind of choral, uh, joint oral history. Um, but they work together. And the idea is usually the films get seen together. So the idea is that, you know, one plus one equals three. And maybe that's the best definition of a documentary diptych, that you get something larger than either of the two films. But the way we conceive the films is that you could see just one and not know that something is missing, you know, that, you, that you've only seen half of the story. So I don't know if that explains it. Yeah, very well. Thank you very much. So uh, what is the scope of a project like this? How long did you work on this film? <laughs> the scope is endless because this archive is immense and this is something I didn't realize when I started but the project started seven years ago uh, seven years ago when I met Stevan Labudovic because he was 87 at the time and uh, and Sylvie and I were actually editing another film when I met him but um, because of his age I knew there was no time and so I started filming with him knowing I was interested in him, not knowing really what his entire life story was, and having a very clear idea about the subject that I wanted to treat, which was non-alignment, but not really a clear idea of how to do that or what the final film would be. And uh, working so long on a project is uh, not only difficult for the director, but what about your collaborators? Uh, do they come on board on this project and go and come back? Or how should I imagine this? I, I let Sylvie describe to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, also, uh, good evening to everyone. It's very impressive to be here tonight. And uh, because we, uh, we are, I'm not able to see you all, so <laughs> I say hello to you, but I, I can't see you. And um, yes, not, it, of course it's not obvious, but uh, as Mila said, what is very um, interesting is uh, she met uh, Stevan Labutovic, the one who showed all these uh, wonderful archives during the, the editing of uh, her last previous movie, uh, The Other Side of Everything. So, you know, even if uh, um, uh, we, we edited the, the previous movie and she started to, to um, uh, to speak to me about uh, about his uh, her project, uh, and um, it, it it was of course it's not it, it wasn't very precise, but the fact is that the the, the subject of the non alignment the non alignment sorry it's very very exciting for her and and for me also because it's a very for me it's a new idea even it's, it's uh, it was a former idea and to to have the to try to honor to, to find the way to, to revival, to make a revival of this idea uh, through this man, through Stephen, we knew that the way um, will be long, for sure, but it, at each step, what I can say, it's, there's a kind of a discovery, a very important discovery. We never have uh, had the feeling to, um, you know, to to be imposed, to, to steal. Uh, we, we, have all, we, we, we had always a feeling to, to move, to move, to move, to go, to go straight. And uh, so it's, we, we, we don't know how long it will be last, but we, we, each time we find something, each time Mila comes back to the editing room with new archive, new interviews, new scene, we say, okay, that page. And finally, it's not. But <laughs> we 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 thought in a, during I don't know one month or two months that we we uh, we, we found the key, and finally not. So we uh, Mila um, uh, keep looking forward, and uh, and and I follow because it's why very very exciting. So um, coming back to this project um, and to the process, um, there was. Uh, some really important thing which happened in the very end of the editing process or in the... Can you tell us something about this? There was a lot of evolution taking place. You know, there was 
There was Stefan Lobudovich as the main character, and that's a kind of very emotional storyline, and I really wanted to honor his life. Then there was the fact that you almost never get the opportunity to make an archive-based documentary with the person who shot the archive. So it was about how can the fact that he is there and with us, how can confronting him with his material give all of us not only new readings of these images, but also a kind of layer of the reflection on what is the documentary image, what kind of political vector has it been you know, in the past. And so there was this kind of meta level of having him reflect on his own images. But then what we realized um, after doing some test screenings was that what we weren't communicating clearly was the fact that this story had never really been told. This archive had never been used and the story of how the non-aligned movement had been born had never been told. But once we make a film about it, you would think, oh, well, okay, that was the story. And that's when we made a very big decision, which was that we needed to change the form of the storytelling, which is to say to include me as the person who's filmed, not only because I'm filming Stefan, but because I'm doing an investigation and that that process of investigation needs to become the dramaturgical framework of the film. So then I went back and began filming my process of researching this archive and we really, we turned it, the formally we turned it into a film about the making of a film, um, which was something that didn't exist at all in the, like the first year of editing that we'd done. Um, and that then led us to think about, okay, well, what are all these things that have been happening to us? What are all these discoveries that, you know, as Sylvie said, have been, I've been bringing into the editing room. How can we invite the audience into these discoveries? And then came this idea to show the discovery of these 26 reels and particularly to show the process by which we found the sound archives and then try to put the sound and the image together. That was all you know, something that, as Sylvie said, it was always, something new was always happening, pulling us further, and, and, and all of these things happened deep, deep, deep into the editing process. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking to the table where, where, the, where the jury is sitting. Any questions so far from your side? Hello. So uh, Sven is speaking. Yeah, yes, hello. Uh, first of all, congratulations that you are nominated for this uh, prize, and uh, thank you that you we could see your movie, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, first of all. Um, for me, um, we all love movies and movies need picture and sound. So what I really liked in this movie was first half of the movie, there was no sound in the archive, right? So it was really great idea to come later and it worked much more impressive to me uh, when um, the picture and the sound came together first time and this worked really well so I really liked it and uh, this is uh, part of movie making and um, we are here to, to celebrate some kind of montage and when I start working I always forget that uh, picture and sound need to come together first. Yeah? Yes, uh, this is a lot of work usually but uh, it must be, it's really impressive uh, to find a sound fitting to this uh, picture. Yeah? I think this was a big work to find the right sound, right? Yeah, so um, uh, there was one uh, question for me um, and uh, this is about the sound of tinnitus, uh, you know, you had this sometimes between scenes, why? Can you say something about this? Or is it too, was it not? Huh? What? Ele this? The yeah, the switch between scenes uh, in between, uh, there was the archive, no sound for the archive and then there was a beep, is there something like to a, say like about a beeping it? sound, like <laughs> tinnitus, like in your ears. I, n I'm not sure which moment of the film you're referring to. There, there is this kind of electronic music that we were putting under some of the archival footage. I don't know if that's the, the moments that you're referring to. <laughs> so it doesn't. So it doesn't matter. But there's one thing I wanted to point out, and this is where sound and pictures coming together. This was a painful process to 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 combine one archive and 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 and, and sound from another archive. Uh, and you did something really special uh, with this. Yeah. Do, 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 excuse me, do, do, Mila. I, I, do, do you speak about the the moment when uh, Chito makes the uh, with the ring? With yes, the exactly. Crown? There. Ah, okay, 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 yeah. 
Um, yeah. So yeah, just to say what we did, it was it was very. I mean, there's also just a really banal thing, which is that sound and image are not recorded at the same speed when we're talking about analog footage, and so it was very hard to synchronize. But also to to ultimately what happened is I, I contacted a company of um, deaf mute lip readers in the UK, who usually what they do usually is like they'll be brought in as experts in trials where there's like um, you know. CC camera TV footage and the, people are trying to understand what people are saying and I contacted them and I said look we have this historical archive of image and then we have sound but there's only pieces of image and there's pieces of sound and they said to me they, we've never done anything like this before we've never worked with historical footage or historical speeches let's give it a try and so I sent them because they're English speaking I sent them Sukarno's speech and they came back quite quickly in, in the space of two or three days so excited saying we, we like we got it and, and started sending us time codes of try this piece of image here with this sound and just when it came together it was it was so magical it was really magical but then and Sylvie can maybe speak to this there was this challenge of how do you edit that into a scene so that can people really participate in that yeah, to, to tell the truth you, you uh, Mila you, you prepare also very well the, the work for the for the man who finally uh, found the good uh, synchronized because we, have, we we work with all the transcription of all the, the speeches of uh, of each uh, uh, president and you know the summit uh, I don't remember exactly but it's last uh, seven days or ten days I don't remember and it in uh, in one day you are I don't know but one for a four session of speeches and so we have a huge, huge, huge uh, um, peel of transcription. And uh, as Milano know ev everything very uh, precisely, we know um, when they, they, they talk about uh, what, what subject or another subject. And so we, um, I remember that we gave some transcription, transcription of, the, of the speeches to the man who finally could uh, find, the, um, find the good extract. But it was uh, already very well prepared with uh, all um, uh, transcription and uh, all the report uh, of, um, on the wheel, the date and the, the name of the speeches and, uh, and all that. Yeah, for me, for me, it was a mag magical moment because um, um, it's 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 so natural that that images and and, and sound are together, and it's hard to imagine that. He doesn't have this, and bringing this together with this uh, uh, um, not, not being synchronized in the first moment mm. and the bell ringing the wrong moment, yeah. this was very eye opening to me and a wonderful point. So, and just to precise, excuse me, just to precise the story of the of bell, it's true that it's the first uh, part that we, uh, we had synchronized in the editing room. In the first one, Mila find the, the good synchronized uh, because it's like a clock, you know, it's really like uh, in cinema. So it's, uh, and when we found this, this uh, minute of silence, we realized that perhaps we can, uh, we, we, we will be able to find more. But this uh, moment was really the first moment we uh, uh, synchronized. I, and I, f I feel like adding one more thing, sorry, I know we're going on too long for, about this particular thing, but for me there was, a, there was a double importance to this gesture. One is, you know, this bringing together of something that was separated 60 years ago, but the other is that this idea of giving them voice felt like a very political gesture, you know, because this is a region of the world that, whose voice has been erased from history. And so it felt like, a, the, the, you know, it wasn't just a, in a filmic sense important, it felt politically important too. And the fact is that it's not even the, the, the speeches and the word who are, who are important, but it's, uh, it's also the sound. You, you mentioned the bell, but you have also the sound of the water uh, pouring by uh, Sukarno. And, uh, and it was so, for us, it was, it was so impressive to, it's like to be with, with, with them in the, in the, in the summit, to, to be able to hear the water. Only that. It was really amazing for us too. So this is a question for Mila. Uh, this is not your first film um, handling archival footage, and this seems to be a very 
tedious task to, to spend hours, months, years in an archive searching for clips, bits and pieces for your films. That's, for me, that sounds horrible. It's not hard. No, it's the opposite. You know, there's sometimes there people like me are sometimes called the archive junkies, and it really is um, something that you get drawn into. And it's not boring at all. It's quite the opposite. It's it's very. It's like a detective story. It's like a detective story. Someone says something, then you try and find the date, then you go, aha, and is this on this reel? And then you recognize it, then you take it to someone so they can tell you. It's just. It's it's just. It's an adrenaline rush. It's an adrenaline rush every time you find something. So no, no, it's it's the opposite of boring. <laughs> okay, Peter has the microphone. Peter, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much for this film. I really loved it, and uh, yeah, very touching story. Very great protagonist. Very emotional, and uh, also great camera work. I think for me, and I found it. Yeah, that you got it. Look very easy how you combine these different layers, and <laughs> uh, if it looks easy, it's often very difficult yeah, to do that. And so, great compliment for that, and it's good to hear that uh, that your your perspective or your part uh, that you added this later, or it wasn't wasn't there at the be beginning. But for me, it was very uh, yeah, very great how you combined these these different layers, the archive, the story with Stefan, your story, and also I, uh, your, your, the timing of your uh, comments. I found it very great and uh, very precise and very, uh, yeah, on the point, it not, was not too much. So, yeah, I, this perspective, I really, uh, it's a great film, and thank you for bringing this historical stuff to an audience, and yeah, and uh, just one question: uh, Did you have another ending with uh, Stefan, or was it always clear that he is at the last 10, 15 minutes? He's not in the film. How did you decide that? The, because the other end, the ending with Stefan is in the other film. It, it was very easy. Once we, once we decided it's a diptych of two films, the, the emotional ending with Stevan, and it is very emotional, it's in the other film, because it's the other film that closes the diptych. Yeah. So we have to come back here and, and to, see, to see the rest. So stay here, you'll probably get some screening. <laughs> Okay. But the question is, is very true because you know there, you, you, there's an emotional payoff that you really want to have with him. It's just you have to see both films to get it. That's um, that's that's kind of um, just another question. The great picture with the ship at the end. Did you uh, arrange that or was it? No, it was. I could not have known. So what happened is because I took him to film on the ship. They uh, the ship now is uh, owned by the city of Rijeka, uh, the city in Croatia. And they contacted me because what's been decided in the meantime is that the ship will become a museum. And they asked me, because I filmed with him on the ship, would I come back and film with other people who had sailed with Tito on the ship? And so I did a series of um, oral histories on board the ship before it was taken away for renovation. So the problem is this renovation has now been going on for also because of COVID for about three years. And we, we're still waiting for the opening of the ship. And uh, it's going to be part of the exhibition on the ship, all of these interviews that I filmed. But um, that image really, I think when Sylvie and I both saw it, we both knew that, that you know, it, it turns the ship into this emotional symbol that you know, felt really, really powerful and potent mm -hmm. as, as, an, as an ending for the film. And, uh, one other question, how, how was your co collaboration or how did you work together? <laughs> because you're both, both editors, yeah. <laughs> Or uh, well, it's um, well. I think it's it's um, it's um, how to say in English, prolongation, <laughs> An extension, I guess. An extension of uh, our work uh, of on the previous movie, um, because you know um, we work. It's like um, two writing in parallel. Because uh, as Mila said at the beginning, uh, she has no idea how to tell the story, and we don't know even know what is the exact story of the movie. So um, when we start, we, we, we question 
we, we, first we have to find the good time to, um, to start the editing. And it's not so, so easy because, uh, uh, as may I say, she, she started to, to film uh, Stephen because Stephen uh, was an old man and uh, he started to lose a little bit uh, his mind also. So it was very complicated for her to, uh, to, um, to, um, well, to, to, to leave and to shoot with him. And, um, but at one stage, uh, uh, we, um, we organized uh, two or three days of, um, of um, screening uh, just to know if we have um, the material to start the movie. Not to finish it, but just to, to, to start. And uh, so we are ready to start the movie, and um, so we, we start. And, but we know that we, um, we didn't have the, all the material yet. And uh, so we start to, to edit scene by scene. And uh, we, uh, as we uh, have to wait for the translation, because unfortunately uh, um, I don't, and I, I don't still uh, uh, don't uh, speak Serbian, so um, we have to, uh, to wait uh, the, for the translation. So we start to, to edit all the other scene, and to uh, and to and we tr uh, and after uh, with the, the memory of uh, Mila of uh, what uh, Stephen uh, tell about the non line and uh, about uh, his own life. We try to imagine a structure, and we so, so we, we really uh, work step by step. And uh, Asmila come back often to to Serbia, so to film Novosti. So she uh, she met uh, she met often Jovana, the, the the woman in the in the archives. Uh, she start to at each time she she had a, a list of a to do list uh, of what she has to. What she has to shoot, or what archive she has to to look for, and and you know it's really um, I don't know it's a, uh, it's a du duet <laughs> uh, in the editing room, and after uh, in the Mila um, went to shoot and come back to the editing room, so we work on the scene and we think okay, so we meet this this this, and so Mila um, go back to to Belgrade, and you know. It's, uh, so, so we work like this uh, in conscience to be um, to to write the movie during the, the editing. I know that it's always like this, but the, on this movie, uh, especially because we know from the beginning that we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know, Mila, if it's well explained. No, or not. I, I agree. <laughs> and just to say the way it works, why it's such a valuable thing, I, I think we inherited in the documentary world a very false way of working because we adopted fiction, which is, you know, you, you research, you write, you film, you edit. And I actually don't think that serves documentaries very well. And we really agreed on this on the last film, so on this film it was very clear it's not at all going to be like that. You know, I was shooting before I researched we were editing before I'd written, and I actually think there's, there needs to be a lot more fluidity in the way productions of documentaries are set up, because I don't think our, bo our films are born in the same way fiction films are born. And so it was a very fluid thing. We would start, we would stop, I would go shoot, I would come back. And for me, because I'm always with Sylvie in the editing room, it's, um, it's a chance to see my footage through her eyes, particularly because I'm the one filming, so I really need that to be there next to her, to watch the footage through her eyes, because she always helps me understand where the pulse of the material is, where's the beating heart of the material. And it's not always where I thought it was when I was filming, you know? Um, and then also, because I need, when I get excited by something, I need to explain to her why, that, may, that obliges me to verbalize what are these themes that are capturing me in the material. And it really, it is really like weaving a yarn from a mass of wool, you know, just, but we do it together. And it's, um, it's a very powerful collaborative experience. You, it's exactly what you say, it's a duet. It's, it's really quite powerful. Thank you very much. There's, there's Barbara with the next question. Hello. Uh, I also enjoyed your movie a lot and, um, and found it very interesting by the way it was woven, the, the several layers were woven together because I think there's, there are at least five, five different stories um, uh, going on. There's the story of the film uh, 
uh, film Norske or what, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, and the, all the camera people there and the people who work in the archives there and so on. And there's your story and your childhood. Then there is the uh, story of Tito and what he improved and uh, Stefan, Stefan or Stefan? Stefan, yeah. Stefan. So uh, and the way you were, you were talking about your. Uh, the way the movie improved over the time. I also think whenever you went back with new material, the whole picture changed again, you know? I mean, okay, okay you, you made scenes, but you, you must have done more than only scenes and waiting and, uh, until the moment when you have all the scenes because um, I guess you had masses of material the archive, but also whenever you went away to, to shoot new stuff. So it must have been, it must have been changed all the time throughout the whole, your whole editing process. And what I would like to know is um, how much time you spent editing together. And I would also, not only together, how much time approximately you spent editing in the editing room, but I'm sure you also had this movie in your head the whole time. <laughs> and, uh, and I would like to know if you, uh, Sylvie, um, did uh, work on your own also, uh, because I think this is something you really have to dig in for yourself for, for, for processes, you know, because it needs time to play and to experiment. It's not, it's not just a logic thing. Uh, can you tell us something about that? Yeah, of course. You're, you're right. Yeah, you, when you say it's not a logic uh, thing, it's exactly wha what we try to avoid. It's to be logic. And uh, it was really, really difficult because as it, it's an, also an historical story, we have to be uh, to be understood, and it was really, really difficult. And um, and for sure, um, as Mila said, she explained to me the archive because I I'm um, I'm French. I, I don't have the the I, I, I didn't know the the, the, the story of uh, of Yugoslavia so so well, and uh, and the, the story of the Lona uh, Alain. Uh, either. So when she find um, a beautiful shot, she was so excited. So I said, "Tell me, tell me what wh what I wh what you see in that shot." And she, she she can tell tell me every story of every man or woman in the shot. But I I didn't know uh, the story before. And you write that at one moment we try to um, I try to um, to edit on my own with my own uh, knowing, and to to experiment what people who um, who, uh, who doesn't know anything about the story uh, could understand. And we we did a lot of work like this because we have to find a good balance between people who are aware of the story and people who, um, who don't. And, um, and even for American people, it's not the same uh, than for French people, than from, uh, you know, uh, African people. And Mila wants to, to do a very international film. So it was really, um, as I say, useful to work also on my side to um, to be able to, to figure out what people could understand or not. And also, of course, for, as uh, usual in the editing, to, um, to, to make Mila able to take some distance from, uh, from, her, from her footage, from the story, and, uh, but th this is the case uh, in, in many movies. But this special, the, the special thing with this movie is to really be aware of what people and, and, uh, understand. Because I remember when, we, when Mila um, screened the movie for American people, and you know with uh, the name of uh, Algeria and Nigeria. And, uh, and people, American people, well, Niger or Algeria, it's, it's the same. So for us, it's, it's, it's impossible. And, and we have to, to, to take it into account to build the, the, the story of this movie. 
So, well, I don't know if I understand your question. <laughs> well, there's, I want to steer it back at one point because there was also the question, how, to, how long did you spend in the editing process? Ah, and as so far as I understand it, it was quite from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, for, uh, from, from the beginning. But it's not, um, it, it, uh, from the beginning, I don't remember exactly because it was a very long journey, so I, I'm not, I have not, you know, when I edit a movie, it's not so, the time, it's not the time in editing room, it's not the, the same time outside the editing room. I don't know exactly, but I'm sure that Mila are, are, are more precise than me. Uh, but at the beginning, we worked together in the editing room, and at one stage with the COVID, we stopped. And uh, we also work at the end, when I um, went to an, another project, uh, she uh, sent me a, a link, a re regular link, and we have a shared document, um, the structure on the shared document with the voiceover. And uh, so I, um, I, uh, I watched the, the movie on my own, I tapped my notes, Mila tapped uh, the note, he, she made some try, and uh, we, we are, um, always connected, not in the same way, uh, but always connected. So I think the calendar would be, I started filming in 2014, mm -hmm. and 2017, Stefan died, and he died a week after the world premiere of my previous film, which Sylvia and I had edited. And then I went on filming and we started editing in July 2019. Then COVID happened 2020, we lost most of that year. But then we went on it, we edited for a full year. Then um, Sylvie, as she said, had to go off on another film. And so then I started, we started working in this way where I began to write a voiceover and uh, I'd never done a voiceover before, and I'd never really spoken in any of my films, and so that was a huge challenge, and I had a wonderful collaborator, a uh, Croatian uh, theater um, director and actress called Barbara Matijevic, who really helped me find the voice, and then, as Sylvie said, I would, I would edit these um, scenes where I lay down the voiceover and try it over different types of archive and send it to her, and then she would send back notes, and it was actually a really great way to work as well because like the material would leave to her and then come back to me and we worked like that for another six months i would say during which i also had a baby so it it it, it the whole thing i would say let's say we started editing in july 2019 and the film premiered in september 2022 and we go and we go back to the editing room also. and we went back to the at the very yeah, end yeah, we went yeah. back to the editing room. exactly yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So, so I've got a last question on your website, uh, Mila. You have um, you describe yourself as a documentary filmmaker, but also as archival activist. What does he mean by this, archival activist? Well, um, it has to do with the fact that when I realized the quantity of the archive that we were facing um, and the fact that we would never tell its story even in two films, it, this became an artistic research project that we called Non Online Newsreels. And it began to take different forms. Um, I began to do video installations. There was one that was shown in the Berlin Biennale this summer. Um, live performances where we do these silent screenings and I did one in Algeria for example last year where we invite people from the countries where the archive was filmed to come and watch the footage and then they take turns with the microphone creating live narrations for the silent footage as they watch it and I filmed that and turned it into video installations so that's the kind of art part of it which is that I've been looking for forms through which to reactivate this archive and then the activist part of it is that all of that for me is deeply political because I think the present geopolitical situation in the world is such that this archive has an important role to play in um, maybe awakening some new political imaginaries, particularly for a generation that doesn't know that there were attempts to create a third way, that there were attempts to you know, build different political voices. And so, you know, all of this work feels deeply political to me. And so that's why Artivist is a kind of play on words, trying to marry these two gestures. Thank you very much, Mila. Thank you, Sylvie. Thank you, the jury and the audience. Thank you very much for joining us from uh, Paris.
Thank you for this wonderful evening, and I hope to see you again. There are two more films nominated. Uh, it's uh, tomorrow, uh, Diamond Minerals, and uh, the other film is Hashtag Race Go on Tuesday. And probably see you again uh, at the awards uh, celebration ceremony uh, on Wednesday. Thank you very much, you both, uh, on the Zoom meeting. Uh, thank you, everybody here in the room, and uh, see you. Bye.